Hello everyone, here I'll discuss about the fetal circulation. Before going to the fetal circulation, I'll brief about the spermatogenesis and oogenesis. So spermatogenesis is the formation of the male gametes in the testis. You can see here, this is the sagittal view of the testis. This one is the testis, this is the epididymis. And here you can see this is the vas deferens. Then here this is the outer covering of this testis. These are the lobules here inside, these are the lobules. When we see one lobule, there are highly coiled seminiferous tubules, 1 to 4 in number. Here you can see this one seminiferous tubule. If you take it transverse cut through the seminiferous tubule, here you can see the central part is the lumen. Here this is the wall of the seminiferous tubule. When we take a magnified view of this wall of the seminiferous tubule, you can see here this is the outer here, this is the outer area. Here this is the inner part that is the lumen. So this is the wall. Here you can see different stages of the cells of the spermatogonium to the spermatids, uh, which forms a part of the spermatogenesis at present. Coming to the steps of the spermatogenesis here, you can see here there are the germinal epithelial cell is there, okay, which one undergoes mitotic division and forms the spermatogonia. The spermatogonia here, there are type A and type B is there. The type B spermatogonia forms this primary germ, uh, germin epithelial cell itself and this type A undergoes mitotic division and forms the primary spermatocytes. Here these are the chromosome numbers here. So this primary spermatocytes which undergoes um, meiosis division, okay, that is the first meiotic division. This is occurring after puberty then forms the secondary spermatocytes here. This is the chromosome number becomes half here. Then the secondary spermatocytes undergoes the second meiotic division and forms the spermatids. One produces two each. Then there's no change in this chromosome number. Then the spermatids mature to form the mature sperms. That process is called the spermiogenesis. The entire process from the spermatogonium to the sperm that is the spermatogenesis. But this maturation of the sperm from the spermatids to the sperm that is the spermiogenesis. Okay. Here, coming back to this wall of the seminiferous tubule, here you can see this is the basal, this is spermatogony, this is the primary spermatocytes. Here you can see this is secondary spermatocytes, these are the spermatids. Okay. Then spermatids undergoes changes okay, and forms this mature uh, sperm. That process is called the spermiogenesis. Okay. Here it is happening through this uh, four phases. One is the Golgi phase, that is the Golgi bodies present in the spermatids undergoes, uh, forms this acrosome. Okay. Then there is an acrosomal phase, the acrosome contents forms this acrosomal cap. Then the, there is a tail phase, so centrioles present in the spermatids elongates to form the tail. Then there is a maturation phase. So the spermatids lose the excess cytoplasm and forms the mature sperm which consists of this head, middle part is the middle piece and this uh, uh, tail. Then you can see this spermatosova in this lumen of the seminiferous tubule. From the lumen it enters to this epididymis. Okay. From there, there it occurs motility Then it's gone to this vast difference. Okay. Then coming to this oogenesis, here you can see this is the section of the ovary. Here this is the central part that is the medulla, this outer area here, this is the cortex of this ovary. In the cortex of the ovary, you can see different stages of the cells from this primary oocyte to this mature follicle is there. Okay. Then the steps of this oogenesis here, here it's also like that what we explained in spermatogenesis. Okay, there is a germinal epithelial cell is there, okay, which multiplies and forms this oogonium which undergoes first mitotic division and forms the primary oocyte. Here, no change in the chromosome number. Then after puberty here or after the maturation, then there is the primary oocyte undergoes meiosis 1 and forms the secondary oocyte. Okay. Secondary oocyte here undergoes the second um, meiosis division. Okay. The primary oocyte undergoes the first meiosis division, first meiosis division and forms the secondary oocyte. The secondary oocyte undergoes second meiosis division. Okay. Here that step that process meiosis division gets stopped okay, until it reaches ovulation and fertilization. So after fertilization here the secondary oocyte completes the second meiotic division okay, 
and forms the ova and the second polar body. So this polar body here, here it has here the same chromosome number, but it doesn't have the capability to fertilize. Okay. That's about this oogenesis. Then coming to this fertilization, we have seen the formation of the male and female gametes. So this pronucleus of the sperm and this sperm, uh, pronucleus of this ovum here unites and to form a single cell structure that is called the zygote and that process is termed as the fertilization okay here you can see in this diagram this is the section this is of the uterus this is the vagina okay so some 300 to 400 million sperms enters to the vagina to the uterine cavity okay then only some 300 to 400 numbers only will reach the will reach the side of the source ovum okay then only one penetrates the sona pellucida of this ovum and fuses with this ovum okay that process is the fertilization okay here you can see this is the ovary here there will be the release of the secondary oocyte into this um, pelvic cavity Okay. then the secondary oocyte gets sucked into this uh, ampulla of this uh, fallopian tube by means of here finger like process these are called the fimbria which sucks which helps to suck this uh, which one secondary oocyte to this uh, fallopian tube okay here then here this is the ampulla here so here the sperms will be there which uh, uh, goes forward here and fertilize with this uh, secondary oocyte then the secondary oocyte which completes the second meiotic division okay and forms the zygote okay so zygote here it is a one cell structure then after that that is happening the fertilization here it's happening on day one here so this uh, one cell stage divides into two uh, two cell stage then 2 to 4, 4 to 8, 8 to 16, 16 to 32. Okay, so 16 to 32 cell stage is named as the Morla. Okay, these are the undifferentiated cells here. Then this Morla is here, it changes to form the blastocyst. That means we can differentiate the cells. There is the outer cells and this inner cells. And there is a cavity here that is the blastocyst. So that uh, that cell stage is the blastula or this blastocyst that gets implanted into here, into this uh, body of the uterus. That is the implantation, which is happening on day six or day seven. From there, it grows. Then, then we'll see about this fetal circulation. Okay. Before coming to the fetal circulation, I'll tell about this adult circulation so here this is the coronal view of through the heart you can see here this is the right atrium here this is the right ventricle this is the left ventricle here this is the left atrium here this is superior and this is the inferior vena cavae here this is the pulmonary trunk this is the arch of iota this is the tracheocephalic this is left common carotid and left subclavian arteries about this circulation here the deoxygenated blood is entering to the right atrium through the superior and the inferior vena cavae. From there, the deoxygenated blood is going to this right ventricle through this left atrial ventricular valve. This is the mitral valve here. Sorry, that is the tricuspid valve. Okay, here is the tricuspid valve. Then from this right ventricle here, it is going to this pulmonary trunk through this pulmonary valve. Okay. From this pulmonary trunk, it is gone to those lungs, through those pulmonary arteries, to this um, left and this right lungs. Okay, from there it gets uh, oxygenated, and the oxygenated blood is entering to this uh, left atrium, through this right and left pulmonary veins, which carries the oxygenated blood to this left atrium. From there, the blood, oxygenated blood, is entering to this left ventricle through this left atrial ventricular valve is called the mitral valve from the left ventricle here the oxygenated blood is entering to this arch of iota here you can see there is an aortic valve 
from this arch of aorta here the, you can see these branches is going to this head and, uh, and this upper leg then there comes the descending thoracic aorta which is continuing as the mm -hmm, abdominal aorta from there it divides into this uh, inter, a common iliac external internal iliac okay that's why uh, it gets oxygenated blood to this uh, lower limb lower extremities okay so that's about this one adult circulation here coming to this fetal circulation here there is a formation of some temporary structures are there in the fetus which helps in this fetal circulation those structures are one is this umbilical veins umbilical arteries from this here we'll get this is the hypogastric artery okay then there is the foramen ovale ductus arteriosus and ductus venosus okay here we'll see the here we'll see the structures okay Here, this is the placenta here so the tropoblast cells okay which forms here this the placenta this is the maternal surface which is attached to this uterine wall this is the fetal surface here we here which is attached to this uh, uh, fetal which is facing towards the fetal side okay here we'll get this amniotic cavity here this is the umbilical cord okay here which is uh, attaching going inside to this fetal body this part okay then here this umbilical cord consists of this uh, one umbilical vein that is marked as red which carries the oxygenated blood then two umbilical arteries okay which carries deoxygenated blood then here you can see here this is the inferior vena cava here here this is the umbilical vein so there is a union between the inferior vena cavae and the umbilical vein that is termed as the ductus venosus okay then here you can see this is the right atrium right ventricle left atrium here this is the left ventricle so there here okay here this is the left ventricle this is the left ventricle this is the left atrium so here this is the pulmonary trunk and this is the arch of iota you can see there is a connection between this pulmonary trunk and the arch of iota that is the ductus arteriosus artery to artery connection the connection between this inferior vena cavae and this umbilical vein here that is the ductus venosus vein to vein connection okay here you can see this is the, i told this is the right atrium here this one is the left atrium then so here this is the left atrium there is a communication between the right atrium and here with this uh, left atrium okay that forms the foramen ovale okay there you can see a foramen foramen here it's communicating with this right atrium with this left atrium there that is the foramen ovale okay so these all are this temporary structures okay we'll see the circulation here you can see this is the oxygenated blood here it is going to this fetus through the umbilical vein okay to the fetal body to this umbilical vein here it unites with this inferior vena cava which carries the deoxygenated blood so at the level of the ductus venosus there is a mixing of the oxygenated and deoxygenated blood of course but most of the oxygenated blood is going to this liver from there the blood is entering to the right atrium okay from the right atrium here the blood is directly going to the uh, left atrium okay it is going to the left atrium through this foramen ovale okay it is not going to this right ventricle okay because respiration is not started from here the blood is going to this uh, left atrium through the foramen ovale okay then from this left atrium here you can see here this is the blood is entering to this left ventricle through the mitral valve or the left atrial ventricular valve from the left ventricle it is entering to this uh, iota to the aortic valve then from there here it is a mix of blood oxygenated and the deoxygenated is there more oxygenated here it is going to this Pacocephalic common carotid left common left subclavian through this upper extremities. Okay, from here starts the descending thoracic aorta. Here you can see this abdominal aorta. 
from here the abdominal aorta here divides into common iliac this is the internal iliac and this is the external iliac okay here the blood is going to this uh, lower extremities okay from here the internal iliac you can see there is a small artery is coming these are the hypogastric arteries the hypogastric arteries here this is continuing outside here as the umbilical arteries which carries the deoxygenated blood okay then about this venous circulation you can see the superior vena cava in the inferior vena cava carries the deoxygenated blood so here we already seen the course of the uh, inferior vena cava here so here this is the superior vena cava which carries the deoxygenated blood it's going to this right atrium from here the blood is going to this right ventricle like in this direction from the lower part here the blood is going to this uh, left atrium like this direction here from here to like this direction okay so from here the right atrium going to this right ventricle here okay here is also there is a mixing of blood is there okay which contains oxygenated and deoxygenated is there okay, here is already there is a mixing in this right atrium okay, from there it is going to this pulmonary trunk okay through the pulmonary arteries it is going to the lungs a small amount is going to the lungs for the maturation of the lungs oxygen is required for this maturation of the cells okay then from there is uh, blood is going coming back to this left atrium through the pulmonary veins here then like that same course follows left atrium to the left ventricle then left ventricle to this arch of aorta here goes towards the upper divisions and goes towards the lower divisions okay can exit through this one that is the hypogastric arteries okay then as continues outside as this umbilical arteries okay that's about this fetal circulation then after that after birth okay the foramen ovale becomes closes okay that ovale gets closed and forms the fossa ovalis okay then ductus venosus and ductus arteriosus regressus and forms a fibrous structures those are called the ligamentum venosum and ligamentum arteriosum respectively the hypogastric artery what you have seen that obliterates and forms the obliterated umbilical artery this umbilical vein forms this ligamentum teres okay so these are the changes happening to the temporary structures which helps in this fetal circulation then here are the important questions here you should know about the spermatogenesis oogenesis fertilization and fetal circulation that's all thank you